Oh, hell yeah. No, but what I was going to say there is I stepped out uh, for a second there when you talked about Freddy versus Jason and such. Yeah. Yeah. And I dealt with Kane well enough to know that if you were just straightforward with the guy, I think you would have been cool with anything. We're not cool with it, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hell yeah. Just be straight. He's a guy. Be straightforward with him. Absolutely. 100%. Are we He's talking about his recast? Kane's an amazing guy. He's he's pissed. He was always pissed about it. It was bullshit. And by the way, I got to say something. Robert Englund was pissed about it too. Yeah. Robert Englund wasn't into it. Robert and Kane are friends. There was he was like, what the fuck is this? Um, and you know, there, there's such a snobbery about that crap because the guy's behind a mask that somehow that's not as important a piece of, of acting. Uh, I'm sorry, like guys. Kane Hodder is the best Jason. The reason yes. is because he created an entire encyclopedia of movement. And, and he really, people don't respect how good an actor Kane is. Like the guy is really good and he cares. God, he, he cares so much about this stuff. And I, I think, I think that, you know, I think that Ronnie, you did a disservice to the fans by not having the fan favorite Jason star in that movie. It's, that's a shame. It's a shame. Nice. And the fact that he got the job over a Chucky gig, it's like, it's not even the same ballpark. It's, Absolutely. Absolutely. It's but before weird. we open up to the Q&A, where's my man, uh, Mark at? Here, man. Hey. Uh, hey. There you are. I... For those who came in late, right before we uh, started the movie, can you give a shout out to your mask again? To the company? Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys can find me on Facebook at uh, Camp, Camp Blood Customs. Right on. So let's go ahead and do this. And nobody else has seen my notes and list. So, Mr. Marcus. Yes. To so we can choose a winner to yeah. who will have their mask sign, which I will be sending out to Adam this week. To get that taken care of, can you give me a number between one and twenty-five? You want me to give you a number between one and twenty-five? Yes, I have everybody who's registered to win, and they got a number. Adam, pick whatever number I am. Got he it. Has a got it there. No problem. Got it. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick my lucky number, which is thirteen. I oh. knew it. Yeah. Well. There you go. Be. Miss, miss, yeah. I think that would make me. your own mask. No, that would be Mr. Ruben. Ruben, are you here still? Ruben. Where the hell are you, Ruben? <laughs> I know I know he was here. There he is. Hold on, let me there he is. He's got his screen. Oh, Does he know he won yet? He's in here. Was that Ruben Morales? Yes, it is. Oh, Ruben. That is awesome. <laughs> that yeah, is man. awesome. Ruben's amazing. Are you kidding me? I love Ruben. I know Ruben. That's fucking awesome. And well that, chosen Ruben. Well done. And and that wasn't pretty planned, folks, but oh, <laughs> hey, no. No. So we'll figure it out. But why don't we go ahead and open up the QA? So Please. if you got you got uh, questions, let us know in the chat. We'll get you uh, set up. Anybody else? Uh, hey, uh, Mr. Ed, so, do, you, do you have something uh, while we wait for uh, people to... I, I'm, I'm thinking of a couple. Why don't you guys go, and I'll I'll, I'll pop in. in the there he bit. is, Ruben. I got I got one. It's a mask, dude. Who had the final say on the mask? How did it go into, like, I always wondered, like, who decides, like, how the mask changes throughout the movies? You mean the actual design of the mask? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what happened on, on the design of the mask was we knew we wanted it to be different than any other mask previous to it. We wanted, we wanted to, you know, create something new. Um, so Bob and Howard and I kind of sat around and talked about what would have happened to Jason's body. Now, here's the thing. I had been told to ignore part eight. Sean okay. Cunningham and New Line had said, forget part eight. We want to forget that it happened. I was like, okay. <laughs> so they were like, just concern yourself with part seven. I'm like, great. So he's been in the water. So the idea of flesh getting waterlogged and sloughing around the actual edges of the mask, I was like, I, I think Jason should be this sort of bloated, 
Like there should be like all of this part of Crystal Lake in him that now that's cool. sort of one with Crystal Lake. And that's, and again, he had a hydrocephalic head as well. So it was like all of this water pressure pushing the flesh around the mask where it's almost eating the mask so that the mask is part of his body. Um, and that's kind of where we came up with it. Here was the thing. The great part about that for Kane was Kane was in a head to toe bodysuit whenever he played Jason in the movie. Okay. So the only thing that we could give him to aerate himself so he wouldn't lose his mind was the mask was we could pop it out from inside the cowl so that there are great shots of Kane on set without the mask, but like he's still got the makeup around one eye and all this stuff. And it, he was wearing a, what's called a cool suit, which they use in like NASCAR, um, okay. which, which drivers, because the cars get so heated, you're so <laughs> hot inside that car that they have these cool suits that basically run cold water through them. They're like, it's a cooling system through the actual suit. So that's what Kane's wearing under the, 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 the full body makeup. So we would pop that mask off and literally steam would be coming off of Kane's. Oh suit. man. <laughs> and once he was in that suit, that was it. He was in the suit. So he would spend 12 hours in that freaking thing once it got once he got it put on. Wow. So yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Kane Kane and he couldn't drink water. Like he couldn't he couldn't bring anything into his body because if he did, he would have to pee. And that right, was a yeah. whole nightmare. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. It's crazy. Wow. That dude's Matthew. Awesome. Matthew. Matthew, hey. you had a question. Hey, buddy. Matthew. Yes. I read from an article from Screen Rat, I want to say in 2018 or 19, that you were developing a spinoff film based on Creighton Duke. I was I just wondering, are you still doing that? And I sure am. Uh, Stephen Williams and I are working on it right now. If so, is it regarding Jason Voorhees, or is it just a standalone film based upon Creighton? It is not regarding Jason Voorhees. Here's here's the tr here's the thing, guys. I I can make a movie with Stephen Williams where he looks a lot like the character who was in Jason Goes to Hell. I cannot use the name Creighton Duke. I cannot talk about Jason Voorhees because the rights are such a freaking mess. Um. Right that it would be impossible for me to do so. So I am more than allowed to work with an actor who I have a great relationship with. And we're going to make a movie that is um, Creighton Duke inspired, uh, but it's badass, guys. And by the way, it will definitely delve into other genre classics, but not Friday the 13th. Awesome. I am very excited, and I love your work, and Thank I'm pretty you, much That's looking awesome. forward to it. You rock, man. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Much. Thanks, dude. Thank you Joe. so much for answering my question. You got it, of course. My pleasure. Hey, Joe. Unmute, buddy. Me, yeah. Me Joe? Yeah, you're next. Yeah. Hey, Joe. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up, Adam? How are you, sir? Good to see you, brother. My question? Yes, sir. Well... We've talked a little bit before, and I've really appreciated your candor and the politeness and the genuine ability that you've got to connect with your fans, especially when I was sick in bed with COVID very recently. Yeah. So you've always been really great. My question how is... About, how are you feeling, by the way, brother? Uh, every once in a while, it still kind of weighs on my lungs, and that's okay. super great. But, you know, overall, um, I've always been kind of curious as to how you fit in with your own personal humbleness and feelings toward the legacy what you have because for a lot of the people growing up um like i i had relatively permissive or irresponsible parents so this wasn't my first jason but for a lot of the kids growing up when this came out they had to go by the mcfarland movie maniacs they had to go by the cover of fangoria magazine the uh the dark horse for three-part comic book series that came out so i just watched this with my kiddo for the first time, remember I told you this, because she yeah. watched the whole box set and watching it through her eyes for the first time, this is the only time, except for part five, where she went, but Jason's dead. What's going to happen? I don't, what? And you can't, you can't pay for that. 
No, you can't. That kind of suspense is a genuine irregularity in the slasher genre. And we've talked about this before. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I have a love for part four. I love it. I love part oh, five. And this is my, this is my tie for part four is Jason goes to hell. Thank you, brother. Because you don't get a regularity anymore. You get guy walks into a room, he's tortured, goodbye. Yeah. Like the Saw movies. How stale yeah. did that get after 30 minutes? Yeah. So how well, do you feel for here, all this? Here's, here's the thing. Um, you know, what's frustrating for me about about this movie and, and, and the people who, who genuinely loathe it and me for, for their own reasons... What, what bothers me about it is, you know, I'm a huge fan of this genre and I'm a huge fan of these movies. Um, I've been told that I'm not a fan, that I'm not a true fan, which always kills me. I also love it when people tell me that my movie isn't canon. And I'm like, no, 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 it's canon, guys. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. You might not like it, but it's canon. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing. Like, Jason's a deadite. I did that. Sorry. Um, but here's the thing. Um, genre fans are always asking for different. They want better. They want, why do we keep getting the same thing over and over again? Why isn't anybody trying to give us better movies and different movies? And I tried to do that. Now, again, if you don't genuinely just don't like the film, I totally get it. And I respect that. That's cool. But I, I tried to deliver, look, I'm a fan of the Friday 13th films. I went to see Jason Takes Manhattan and I was disappointed. Damn As right. a fan. I was in college and I was like, eh. Damn it. And I was in New York. By the way, I was in New York when I saw that film. So I was the right audience for that movie. And so I was, when I went, when I got to make a movie about this character, I was like, I'm going to do a movie for the fans by a fan because I love these films. Yeah. And, and that's the part of it. Look, I'm respectful to everybody's opinions. I really am. Like if you, if you dislike this movie, we're cool. I get it. No problem. Um, I'm not disrespect. I'm not, I'm not okay with the disrespect directed towards people involved with this movie where it becomes personal, where people are just rude or insensitive towards the fact that there are artists who work really hard on this film. Um, you know, as, as we've talked about, I spent four years of my life on this movie. Yeah. Because, not because I didn't care, but because I cared because I loved the movie and I wanted to make a great film. Um, and again, an opinion is cool. There's just, there's a level of disrespect that I don't understand in, in our, in our subgenre and what we all love. Um, and look, it, it's also why I say horror fans, are the best fans in the world. If you meet a true horror fan, those people don't hate on, on people. They just don't. They might Everyone not see the movie, but they're cool about it. Um, yeah. I think that the fanboys who uh, who live to just be critical online, um, you know, my mom always said, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say nothing. So I'm going to say nothing about that. <laughs> well, awesome, man. Ethan. Yeah. You're up, buddy. Love you, Jeff. Uh, thank you. Better. Hey, Ethan. Hi. Uh, I got a question. Yeah. Uh, is this true or not? Is Jason Goes to Hell a prequel? No. Okay. It's okay. It's a sequel. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's interesting that Jason's a deadite. Like, I think it adds to the story. It makes you know connects everything. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. Yep. And um, I think one thing that Jason takes my hand did right is the feel. It still feels like you know, like that classic Friday Thirteenth. I totally agree with you. I think Thank you're hundred percent right. I do. Um, I just think, look, here's the thing. I think that um, the one failing of, of Jason takes Manhattan is that Jason didn't take Manhattan. He, he took a boat ride. Like the last 10 minutes he's in Manhattan. Right. And by the way, he's not even really in Manhattan. There's the one shot where he's in Times Square and then the rest of it, he's, you know, he's in, in Canada, Montreal, yeah. you know, and God bless. <laughs> like, I understand. I understand how hard it is to try to shoot in Manhattan. I've done it. I've shot movies in Manhattan. It ain't easy, but it's not impossible. So I, I just feel like they undercut the director. They didn't give him the tools he needed in order to tell the bigger story. That being said, come on, guys. Like, there's stuff in that in that in that movie that's awesome. Like, there's great sequences. There's great kills. Um, you know, it's still a Friday Thirteenth food movie. You know, so I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna shit on it. I, but by the way, my bosses did, and my bosses wouldn't even allow me to treat it as part of the of the of the film. 
Yeah. I think that's really a. I think that's. I don't like that how it's how it's not really connected. You know. Yep. It, because you said the new blood, new blood takes place. Um, like new goes new blood, then Jason goes to hell. Right. Like it should be J- Jason takes my hand. Should be there, but. I know. agree with you. I agree with you. All right. Thank you, Adam. You got it, Ethan. Nice to meet you, man. And I love your yeah. T-shirt, dude. It's awesome. Thank you. Halloween. Yeah, Skippy. Oh yeah. And I know I'm going to get bitched at for this one because of the mask giveaway, but Garrett, where are you? There he is. Hey, Garrett. Hi, I'm here. (laughs) Wait, I didn't win the mask? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I've got like a really generic question, but I'm genuinely interested. I know that you're a fan of the franchise and horror in general. So first, what is your favorite Friday the 13th, and then aside, putting Friday the 13th aside, what's your favorite horror movie? Okay. Uh, part six has always been my favorite Friday the 13th. Oh, yes. Nice. Good choice. Good I, choice, Ed. I love that film. Um, I love the look of Jason. I love um, Tom McLaughlin, who's a terrific guy. Um, he's got an amazing sense of humor. And for me, that's what the franchise needed at that point, because after part five, the franchise had been so beaten up that I think he almost had to wink to the audience, like, go, eh, it's a Jason movie. It's Friday the 13th, which I think was the right way to go back into the franchise. Um, And look, I also think he's a badass because, you know, if you start your movie with Horshack, um, and you're, and you're killing Jason, but you're resurrecting him via, you know, Mary Shelley. Um, yeah. I think if you can bring classic Frankenstein literature into, into Friday the 13th, God bless you, dude. Like that's now you're, 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 you're putting this on a higher shelf. Well done. Um, so I love that film. I also love the performances in it. I think Tom Matthews is freaking great in that He's movie. Awesome. He's so he, good. When I picture Tommy Jarvis, that's who I picture. But even people like Paul McCrane, I mean, like, you've got great actors in that film doing really cool work. Just really, yeah. really cool work. I so, agree. And, and look, for me, um, one of the reasons Part 4 is so badass, and it is so badass, is because the performances are great. Like, you love those kids. The reason I love Amy Steele, other than the fact that I think she's breathtakingly beautiful to look at... She's a terrific actress. She had a great career before Friday the 13th. She had already built up her, her prowess as a performer. So for me, I'm all about the acting. You know, um, look, I mean, you know, Kevin Bacon's a badass from the first one. Like, there's just great actors in, in each one of these movies. Part six has a concentration of some really good performances. So I dig that. Um, when it comes down to my favorite horror films of all time, look, you cannot get away from the, the from from the best to the best. I mean, The Exorcist, The Shining, Rosemary's Baby, Jaws. These are a, a cut above the rest, not just because of the production value. They're all bigger budget movies, but because you're talking about some of the best directors of that period of time of the of the 1970s, where we had this concentration of remarkable filmmakers who told studio executives what they were going to do, not vice versa. So you had really dangerous people working in our industry. Um, I will say this. uh, I'm I'm personally a bigger fan of sort of smaller genre horror and more obscure stuff. And by the way, I can't leave out Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Halloween. I I would be, or The Thing. I would be, you know, I'm, I'm a bad, bad, bad horror fan if I do. But... Um, how many of you guys have seen the French film, the 2007 version of Inside? I did. Okay. This is one of the most badass, incredible pieces of horror filmmaking, and it's an amazing feminist movie. Like, it is, it, it is um, everything that the final girls in our movies represent, but in a bigger way. Um, The movie is so incredibly well done, guys. And I'm telling you, it's not for the faint of heart. It's one of the goriest movies I've ever seen. Does not skip on the gore. It is ferocious. It's a brilliant movie. If you've not seen Inside, do not see the remake. Do not bother with that remake nonsense. But watch the original film. By the way, by the guys who ended up directing um, Leatherface, the prequel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which, by the way, they got as screwed as Deb and I did. 
So those guys are badasses. They took the film away from them. They reshot stuff. They completely changed the movie they were making. Um, those two filmmakers, two French filmmakers, they're brilliant guys and, and they made an incredible movie. So I always try to like let people in on like the movies that I will watch over and over and over again. And Inside is definitely one of those. And it's from that great period of filmmaking in France. It was like that, you know, with, with high tension. Oh, and frontiers. Yeah. High tension like, is awesome. Right? It's amazing, right? Awesome. And I'm telling you, Inside is one of those movies that like people don't talk about. It. And I'm like, no, you like Martyrs is part of that group. Like, there's something that was going on in France in the mid 2000s that was just fucked up, guys. Like, they were pissed. The French were pissed. And their movies reflected. And there's some of the best horror films ever made. So, so there you go. So, well, Ed, Ed jump much. in. Ed and Ray. For oh, course. by the way, by the way, one sec, guys. I would be remiss if I didn't say um, Secret Santa, which I made a couple of years ago. If you haven't seen it yet, it's a badass horror comedy. It's fucking insane, and you should see it. So, I'm gonna give a lot of free advertising to guys like 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 inside, <laughs> but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna miss telling you I made a great fucking horror movie a couple of years ago. So go on, please. Uh, yeah, since we're talking since we're talking about Texas Chainsaw, I might as well ask uh, Adam: Do you have any idea what's going on with the one they shot last year? Um, I don't know. Um, I I I, uh, I know that the, <laughs> the producers on the movie are really difficult, so I can't really tell you how that's all going. I I know the players involved, and it's. You know, they're the kind of people that put a cell phone, a smartphone in the middle of 1993 movie. Um, so I'm nervous about it no matter what they do. If they've given more control to the filmmakers they hire, then maybe we'll end up with a better movie. Um, that's the big problem I have with all this stuff, guys. Like, I don't understand when people hire experts and then don't listen to those experts. That confounds me. It's like, if you hire great horror filmmakers, let them go make you a great horror film. So I don't know. By the way, COVID has thrown all of our wishes and dreams out the window for the last year, guys. Like, there's a ton of great movies <laughs> that are supposed to come out that I hope they hold on to. I don't want them to come out direct to video. Guys, horror movies are meant to be seen in a theater with all of us screaming yeah. at each other. Like, come on, man. Like, I don't I don't need it to go to Shudder. Like, let's see this film in the theater. Then it can go to the other. You know, then it can be on TV. But... Man, being in the theater screaming with each other, that's the coolest shit ever. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Well, like speaking that. of which, uh, yeah. Ray, before you uh, jump on, uh, Luke, I know you had to step out for a second, but you want to go ahead yeah. and mention Luke. what, what Adam Luke. was talking about? Yeah, I would like to uh, actually just personally say that I think uh, Adam Marcus's best movie isn't Jason Goes to Hell, but it's actually Secret Santa. Yeah, and this movie oh, should be watched by everybody because this really pushes the boundaries of when it comes down to a holiday movie because there's one scene in particular in this movie that is so offensive and I love it because it really characters in this movie are exceptionally talented, including Deborah whose character is my favorite. And this movie really shines Adam Allen and how he can bring horror and comedy and mix such a great bowl of talent together. This is his best movie, hands down. And I recommend everybody seen it. I've bought four copies for people that I think would like it. And I will still buy more for them. It is such a great movie. And it really is one of my favorite Christmas horror movies, and it's his best work, in my opinion. Thank, Thank you, Luke. Luke. That's amazing, man. And by the way, I, she happens to be here right now, but I would still say it even if she wasn't in the room. Her her work in, in, in Secret Santa is so insanely good. Um, uh, and, and again, it's, you know, it was the first Skeleton Crew film. It's my troop of actors. It's it's my team. Uh, it's our best friend, Brian, who produced the movie with us, who is who is the third member of Skeleton Crew. And, you know, um, it's it's what can be a cop. By the way, if you guys get to see it the way Luke saw it, either on DVD or Blu-ray, there's a, a documentary on the disc um, that's a feature like documentary. It's 75 minutes long at, called um, Naughty or Nice, The Making of Secret Santa. 
And the reason it's there um, is that there was so much to tell about the company and about how we work. So if you watch that documentary after you see the film, you can just see, by the way, 12 days to make that movie, guys. It took 12 days. Um, we shot the movie. You can't buy a new car for what we <laughs> shot the movie with. Okay? Yeah. No, don't tell. Don't tell. Um, it's just between us. Um, but guys, it's it, it just shows you like the power of people who are creative and want to accomplish something. That's what that movie shows. And by the way, it's kind of seen in Jason Goes to Hell as well. I don't want to get off, off brand on it because the truth is Jason Goes to Hell was made for nothing. And I had an incredibly talented team of filmmakers and actors. And that's how we got that thing done. Um, there, and by the way, that includes Sean Cunningham. Sean Cunningham is a great producer. He's not a great guy, but he's a great producer. So, you know, I can't, I'm never going to fault somebody. I'll give the devil their due. And he is the devil. <laughs> Mark my words on that. But Luke, thank you, man. I, I really appreciate it, brother. Secret Santa is the movie that's the closest to my Big life. fan. Thank you so much, Luke. It's awesome, dude. Hey, Ray, where you at, buddy? Big fan. I'll watch all your work. Oh, hey. Oh, uh, thank you. That's awesome, man. Hey Jonathan. Um, hey Marcus. This is Ray. Um, hey, Ray. Marcus, I just needed to ask, ask you a question and also comment. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, that scene where uh, Freddie and Jason, the mask and all that stuff. Yeah. It actually, uh, you know, shocked me because one, you didn't know it was going to come ten years later after was it called yeah. Jason versus Freddie? That was yeah. pretty much brilliant ideas you just came across, dude. Because that was that was your. That was just like the mark for tit for the whole what do you call it, the battle between them. What do you do? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that, dude? Well, here's the thing. Um, the reason it's even in the movie is because I was trying to connect. As look, when I was a little kid, um, uh, and I'm sure you guys have seen these episodes, but like I loved Scooby Doo when I was a kid, right? And when when suddenly Batman was on Scooby Doo, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Scooby-Doo knows Batman? Like, how is awesome. that a thing? And again, I'm like six, That's right? So I'm like, awesome. what is that? Then the week later, the Harlem Globetrotters were on Scooby-Doo. I was like, what is going on, right? <laughs> so when I went to make Jason Goes to Hell, I was like, how can I connect the all these horror movies in one movie? Like, how can I show people my love of horror in the biggest way possible, right? So- um, the other thing is, you know, how we all hate in a horror movie when people act like they've never seen a horror movie. Like, it's like that Geico commercial where they're like, let's go hide behind the chainsaws. Um, and the killer is like, Ugh. okay, so for me, I was just like you guys, like, I hate when I'm watching a horror movie and people make like, let's split up. Oh, come on. But here's the thing, <laughs> if all horror movies are people who have never seen a horror movie because all the horror movies are the reality of those movies, suddenly that takes away all that stuff. It changes things for the audience if every horror movie is connected yeah. in some way, right? So in their universe, they don't have horror movies the way we do. They'd have another version of horror movies. So I wanted to connect all these movies together. Great. So I had The Evil Dead. Sam had given me the book. All good. Um, I had The Birds. I had Creepshow. I had, you know, I called the Sheriff Sheriff Landis because John Landis was one of my heroes growing up. So I, and American Werewolf is absolutely one of the, it's the best werewolf movie ever made. That and Dog Soldiers. Love Dog right Soldiers. I've seen it. Neil Marshall. Neil Marshall's a badass. Um, and The Descent is fucking genius. But Dog Soldiers. Oh, Hell yeah. Oh, so good. So good. But I wanted to, um, to incorporate all this stuff. So I'm sitting in my apartment um, where I lived with Dean Laurie, who wrote the script with me, and Noel Cunningham, who was, was one of the editors on the film at the time, but my best friend since we were kids. And we're all sitting around, and my roommates, I don't drink. I don't drink or do drugs. Uh, but by the way, I'm all for people drinking and doing drugs. So anybody wants to light up, go for it. Um, but here's the thing. My roommates were getting stoned to the bejesus. That. Like they were just like, it was like Snoop Dogg was living in my house. And these two guys are getting stoned. <laughs> and, I was like, and I'm trying to come up with like cool shit I can put in the movie. And suddenly I was like, wait a second. They just had done Freddy's dad. 
And like, so Freddie would be in hell. Wait a second. I said, does New Line own Freddie outright? Do they own like own him stock and trade? And the guys were like, yeah, I think they do. Uh, and they, they both were giggling at this point. I get on the phone to Mike DeLuca and Mark Rodesky, who are my two executives over at New Line. Both great guys. And by the way, Mark Rodesky is the guy who's responsible for Lord of the Rings films. Happening. He's the guy. Okay. So these two badasses, I get them on the phone, middle of the night. I said, hey, guys, um, can I use the Freddy glove and a laugh? And they're like, what do you want it for? Like, they suddenly got really, like, cold with me. Like, they were, like, a little, like, what? And I told them what I wanted to do at the end of the film. I was like, who better to drag Jason to hell than Freddy? And he's already there. Oh, they could not have said yes fast enough. Yeah. They were, like, over the moon about this idea. And when the first screening audience... By the way, so we, we did the first test screening down... In, um, near right near usc in la right and peter brackey the author of crystal lake memories was in that audience and was actually one of the 20 people that was chosen as a focus group after the movie showed that's a true story so i knew peter suddenly peter tells me this story and i was like wait a minute you were the little shit who said this he's like yep i'm like motherfucker um, <laughs> well, i've known that guy forever um and i didn't even know i knew him uh so uh, during that test screening, when the entire audience jumped to their feet and gave the movie a standing ovation, when that happened, the two executives who had said yes to me are high-fiving, like, like literally their hands were going to come off. They were high-fiving so hard because they knew we're setting up for Eddie versus Jason. I didn't know they were doing that, but they, they were like, Adam has just given us the keys to the kingdom to go do this. So that's how it happened. Awesome, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, Fred. Hey, John. Yeah. Hey, John. Yeah, me? Hey, John. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I guess just wanted to ask you real, you know, with COVID in the movie theaters, you yeah. made a good point. Do you worry that movie theaters in their previous form may not last in the way they did? Because horror flicks, like you made a really good point that I just thought of now really need to be seen in movie theaters. Mm -hmm. And boy, would we miss that if we do just have to watch it on you know, uh, Shudder or all these movies come out on Disney as opposed to right. where right. they're really meant to be seen. I mean, how do you feel? Do you think going forward there's any chance to keep it as current form or do you think it's going to be more like uh, drive-ins in the future where... No, it's I, think, look, I, I think both can exist. I actually think the return of the drive-in is kind of a great thing because I think it's really cool that people can go with their families and actually be in this sort of little family mm -hmm. pod but still seeing a big screen experience, right? I think that's cool. But I, I will say this, I think movie theaters will come back. I think we're going to get past COVID. I think we're going to get back to, you know, back to our lives, which which I'm looking forward to desperately. Um, I don't think the theater will ever go away. And quite frankly, I think they're going to come back with a vengeance. And here's why. We've all been deprived of that experience for yeah. so long now. I think the minute they let us go back into movie theaters, we're going to be like, fuck, yeah, we're going back into movie <laughs> theaters. Sure. Um, I don't think everybody's going to do it en masse. I think it's going to take some time for people to feel safe and feel better about it. But look, horror movies and comedies, those are movies that are not meant to be watched alone. Like, those are movies that you need an audience because there might be something that scares somebody four seats from you, but they jump, which makes you jump. Like, mm -hmm. and comedies, like, I'm sorry, if somebody, look, you know, there's a reason they put a laugh track on sitcoms. Because they want you to feel like you're in an audience of people laughing at the show. So there's nothing better than, look, man, I got to tell you, when, when, um, when Texas Chainsaw came out, Dev and I went to the opening screening at this place called The Grove, which is in the middle of LA and it's beautiful. It's a, it's a great, great spot. And we're in a packed, sold out movie theater. And when Alexander Daddario is running out of the house right after, you know, when she's trying to escape, right? Right before she gets in the coffin and the whole thing. Um, she runs out and there's that trip and she falls down the stairs, that like amazing stunt. It's a brilliant stunt. Okay. As she's running, some guy in the middle of the theater goes, run, bitch, run! <laughs> the whole audience erupts, right? <laughs> lose their minds. Now, here's the thing. As, as off color as the comment is, I got to tell you, I sat there, I was like, oh, these are my people. Because 
I, you, you, de- as a filmmaker, you desperately want that interaction with your audience. You want to see how it, how it, how it, how they react off of it. And look, I will tell you, one of my great teachers in film uh, was Brian De Palma. Um, I worked for Brian on Bonfire of the Vanities when I was real when I was a kid. Um, by the way, same year I worked on okay, Goodfellas. Wow. I worked on God, Goodfellas and Bonfire of the Vanities back to back. So I worked for Marty and then for Brian De Palma, literally back to back. It was amazing. Um, so wow. I'm I'm working with Brian, and then I was out in LA, and I went to go see one of his films because I, I had no money. Right, I got to Los Angeles, I was penniless. Um, I lived in my car for a few months. I mean, I was it was not good. Um, and I get out here and the only way I could go see movies was that in Santa Monica on the promenade, they give out free movie theater tickets if you'll be a test audience. So I would just go to test screenings and then I would sneak from theater to theater and see all the other movies that were in the theater. So I would like spend the rest of the night just theater hopping. Okay. So I go to see Raising Cain. It was Brian's new movie. So I'm sitting in the theater for Raising Cain. And Brian is in the theater, which I'm freaking out because I'm like, he's totally going to recognize me. This is terrible. I'm totally here under false pretenses because you have to lie and say that you're not in the film industry when you when you accept one of these things. So I'm like, oh, this sucks. Don't look at my way. But Brian, he goes to the front of the movie theater. He sits in the first seat and he turns when the lights go down. He turns and watches the audience. He doesn't watch the movie. He knows the movie. He watches the audience. As a filmmaker, you have to respect that audience. You have to respect the way the crowd reacts to things. You have to respect where and why they're screaming, why they're laughing, what, what's happening in that audience. And I got to tell you, like, I learned so much from Brian because of that. Because now, every test screening I have of any film I, I go to, I watch my audience. And I know what's working or not working in my film by watching the way they're reacting. The minute someone starts looking down or checks their phone or they go to get something to eat, I'm like, I'm done. That's a problem. I got to fix that. I got to fix that part of the movie because I'm losing my audience at that point. So, by the way, Brian did recognize that it was me. He did see me in this sold out crowd of movie theater. And he turns, he goes, you work in the film industry. I was like, oh, shit, man. Yes, I'm sorry, Brian. He's like, it's okay. I've been there too. No money, huh? So that was, yeah, that was Brian's reaction to me being there. But yeah, man, I think we're going to get back to movie theaters, and I think that we have to get back to movie theaters. Yeah. We need to have that communal, communal experience. I agree. I hope so. Well, since he's here on camera now, Ruben. Ruben! My brother! Hey, hey. hey guys. So. Hey, dude. You're gonna get the mask. I don't. I'm sure you heard. What was it? You're you the got winner the mask, of the mask dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know who was number thirteen. <laughs> oh yeah, but you know, is there any particular way you want it besides uh, Adam cursing you out? Wouldn't have it any other way. Damn stiff. <laughs> Damn stiff. <laughs> and as he's getting cursed out in the chat room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's great. Awesome. That's awesome. And, and that full awesome. disclosure, uh, Garrett was the one who started the throwing stones. He goes, "That mask is mine." Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jump, but I get it. but Joe, uh, you said you wanted to have another question before we yeah. wrap up, Joe. If, if that's okay, go for it. I know yeah, we're, here. Let's do it. we're all fucking busy. Um, so the Texas thing, I always want to say thanks also for doing a legitimate sequel to that movie. Thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, man. And then um, when you were doing, uh, I know that Kane was also involved in the actual uh, uh, the video game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you oh, approach yeah. you on that? Because I know, now, we all hate nitpickers. Yes. Fuck. The internet. Everyone's unsolicited, inappropriately, volatile, self- <sighs> How much shit has everyone in the world given you on the eye socket? Um, a lot of shit. Yeah, I, I, I shit. thought so. Did they approach you on what he looks like unmasked? Because apparently that's like one of the big selling points of the game. If you play the game, it's all... Bah. Do you know a lot of people... A lot of people... Um, ha- look, first off, the guys who made the game did approach me, and they were awesome. They, were, they couldn't have been sweeter. Yeah. 
Um, you have to remember, uh, uh, and this this happened without me, but you know when when the fans were asked what they wanted, the fan the first unlock look of Jason, like the fan look of Jason to be. Yep. Kane called me and was like, "Listen, you got to watch this live stream I'm doing tonight because you ain't gonna believe what happened." I'm like, "Okay," and <laughs> Jason goes to hell was the fan favorite. I was like, "What? That? Well, what? You like, damn right, yeah." yeah. Dude, he looks dope. No, is the are the people that we talked about? Who, who well, and there? by the way, the fact the fact that you have to you know you have to have six hundred sixty six kills, and I mean, like, I was like, okay, this shit's awesome. Like, this is so badass. Like, I love it. Like, I'm so much more excited about it now. Um. So yeah, they did. They did approach me about it. Um. And we're really sweet and very collaborative. We they never really got into the whole eye socket thing with me, which was kind of great. Like they didn't. They, those guys are so respectful of all the creators <laughs> of the of the of the films that yeah. they're just really cool about it. But I will tell you. I mean, I consulted. <laughs> I consulted with uh, Sideshow on the Jason Goes to Hell Sideshow doll. Um, awesome. Yeah. 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 They sent me a ton of free awesome shit. Like I they sent me technical stuff. I was never able to buy that, so I'm all, I'm secretly dead inside. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool, dude. It's a pretty cool. It's a pretty badass uh, thing. The sculpt, as far as the sculpt under the mask, no, we didn't really talk about it a lot. Um, I I will tell you, like Brandon Scott Murphy did um, did the first one that I had seen years ago and sent it to me and was like, would I endorse it? And I love the thing. I've got a copy of it in my office and I, I freaking love the thing. It's beautiful. Um, but I got it. You know what I love? Here's what I really love about, about the fact that I never show off the, the face in the movie. Um, and by the way, that came, that came not just from me, but from Sean Cunningham because Sean Cunningham was very strict about never show the face of fear because then it's not scary anymore. And I agree with it. Like, yep. it's sort of like when they take Darth Vader's helmet off in, in, in you know, in uh, Return of the Jedi, and you're like, Darth Vader is a purple cantaloupe? What? <laughs> 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 when they kill Leatherface's face in that remake they did. Because yes. that first scene in the very first movie, when he's in that den, and he's just kind of licking his lips, and he's obviously, you can tell he's, he's ill, he's in his place. Yeah, but the fact they never—I love the Texas Chainsaw because it—it wasn't supposed to happen. It just happened to happen, and that's like the scariest thing. And I always loved that you right. didn't. Show I agree. Me. That and and look, I, what I really <laughs> love about it is is that there are so many like amazing artists. This is my this is my boy Ali, by the way. This is Oliver Twist. <laughs> You got to um, post that figure later, man. You got to post it. I want to see it. I will. I totally will. And I will tell you, here's what I love about, about the artists that I've met, including Ruben, by the way, who's a badass. Um, guys, the, the, um, the thing that's great about not seeing the, the face in Jason Goes to Hell is the number of people who've done their interpretation of it. Like, I love that artists are like, what's under there? I want to create that. I think that's fucking badass. Um, and if, and if, if, any movie can inspire other people to create art. Well, I'm yeah. sure nothing better. There's simply nothing better. Like that's that's what art should do. It should make other people want to make movies or write songs or sculpt something. Like that's what it should be about. And I kind of love the inspire one it. another. The what? Inspire? Yes, that's it. Inspire one another. Community. The same way I'm inspired. Look. You know, if there was no Sam Raimi, um, I wouldn't be a horror filmmaker. I just wouldn't because Evil Dead, even though I loved horror movies, Evil Dead made me go, wait a minute, I can do this with my buddies? Like, we can just shoot this shit in the woods? And, and it can be funny. <laughs> right, and Stephen King can fucking see it and put his name on the poster? That shit can happen? Well, that opened up, that opened up the world to me. It really did. Um, I am buying Secret Santa on Friday. My man, okay. yeah, okay. you're gonna love it. It's great. It's and, great. And get it, I'm, get it. I'm, watching it. I'm watching it. With my, my daughter turns ten on Monday, and I'm actually watching it with her because she's ten, and I don't. She's fucking seen everything else under the damn sun. Ugh. She thought the alien coming out of the chest was cute, so I was like, "You're fine." That's <laughs> awesome. Did you get um, that movie on Amazon? You can you can yeah. uh, you can get the movie on Amazon, but I'm gonna I'm sending you guys the link to get it directly from us to get it directly from. Um, we got uh, it came through your own website. 
SecretSantaTheMovie.com slash merch. I'm going to have uh, that person autograph for you, too. We do we do signed copies. We do posters. We do all kinds of cool shit. So definitely yeah, check that out if you want to. Okay. Um, but guys, look the the other thing. And to your earlier point, by the way, because I didn't want to I didn't want to pass it by, Joe. Um, is you know on on Texas Chainsaw, the one of the greatest phone calls I got in my life, truly. Yeah. Uh, I got a call from Toby Hooper before he passed. Toby Hooper called us. He had just read Devin my second draft of the script. Oh. He called me and he said, Adam, this is the closest thing to a sequel that my original film ever had. He said, and I'm including the movies I made that were sequels. Was it your idea to just kind of have him kind of living his life in the basement of that house? Because that's yes. my absolute favorite yep. fucking thing. Because ever since I saw that first movie, I can't drive. I drive across the country all the time just because I'm bored. Sure. And... And whenever I pass, like, Kansas, Nebraska, Wyoming, I'm just like, huh. <laughs> right. Right. What could be <laughs> going on there? Like, what sinister shit? And, you know, the Ed yeah. Gein and the, and the Norman Bates in all of our lives, that's where we sit with all of it. It's conscionable. Yeah. But, by the way, I mean, here's the thing. One, one of the things that we, that we did that's not really in the movie, that's not explained in the film, and it's something that we had created that, I, that is – it's sad. They, they didn't really include a lot of this material. Um, but – the idea was that that picture that's taken for the newspaper of all the people who laid siege to the house and killed yeah. the players. Okay. There's supposed to be a giant blown up version of that in the, in Leatherface's basement. Okay. Of that yeah. Like a and hit there, list. <laughs> and there are X's, there are X's through the ones that he's killed. Scr oh, yeah. Scratched out. And the idea of the movie was that for, for all these years, these people end up showing up just murdered, like just fucking torn to pieces, right? Or gone, yeah. But, but he does it slowly over time, so nobody's ever connecting it to Leatherface or that he's still alive because his, his grandmother has him down in the basement locked away. Okay. That's so cool. That's my favorite oh. part about that whole movie was just the sinister home life. Yes. yes. And by the way, yeah. and by the way, we also had two two other things we had in the movie that, I, that that breaks my heart. The last fight between Bert Hartman and and Jeb in the, yep. that pa uh, paper plant or what oh. ended up being the, the slaughterhouse. The um, fight. <laughs> there were twelve guys in that fight. In the way we wrote that scene. Yeah, you and said then they so. Shot two. I'm like two guys are beating up Leatherface and he's cowering. What do you what? With a chainsaw? With a chainsaw. We had, yeah, we had twelve guys. So when Leatherface got his chainsaw back, he tears through twelve cowboys who were responsible for oh, that his family. Bad ass. It was insane, guys. It was insane. It was insane. We you also post the last page of that script just for that. Just just dude, to post it, was, it was nuts. It was nuts. It was it was oh so good. So, yeah, um, Texas Chainsaw, again, you know, it's the movie that inspired us to create Skeleton Crew because they, they did so many things to screw stuff up. Um, and I just went, I don't, <laughs> don't want to make movies like this anymore. I want to make movies where there are smart people making good choices. Well, your first movie did a great job with Skeleton Crew with Secret Sand, and you got more coming. It's so yeah, good. More coming. I can't I wait. It's good. really talented. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, brother. I'll awesome. message you. <laughs> well, speaking awesome. of, speaking of a skeleton crew, I wanted yeah. to ask with that. You tend to do a lot of uh, workshops with some of your actors. Yeah. Is, is that to see who's good for what or what's the purpose of the workshop? Well, no, I, I actually, I do, um, I do a ton. Uh, we do workshops, yes, but I, I, I've been teaching in LA. I, I created my own studio about uh, 27 years ago now. And uh, I teach tw two nights a week, even during the pandemic. I, I, I've done two Zoom classes that, uh, you know, I've got 50 actors that I work with every Tuesday and Wednesday night. Um, and so we'll do a lot of showcasing, but that's for other, that's, that's so that I can show my actors to other casting directors, other directors, other people in our industry so that they can keep working. Cause I want them to just get as many jobs as possible. And I don't want to isolate anybody or however you want to put this, but with those showcases, is there anybody that really floored you? Cause you've seen a lot of material over the years. 
Yeah, dude. Yes. I, I mean, again, look, I, I've got, I've got such an incredible team of people that I work with um, that. Yeah. I mean, I, I get floored pretty often. Um, I will tell you when you guys, if you get, if you get a chance to see secret Santa, there's a guy named Michael Rady in there and Michael has had an incredible career. The guy is like, he's done a ton of television and, and film. Um, and I got to tell you, you know, I watched him at a couple showcases and the guy just blew me out the back of the house. So, you know, um, and look, you know, Deborah is somebody who showcases constantly for, for, uh, for casting and stuff like that. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm all about actors. Be and again, this goes back to the theater thing about making sure we get our theaters open. Um, you know, those, the best place for my performers to work is in live theater so that people can see directly what they're able to do. Right on. Uh, so everybody, make sure you pick up a uh, Secret Santa through Secret Santa Movie, the movie, dot com slash merch. Awesome. Uh, we will be getting a mask out to Adam. I will be getting an address from him and get address from Ruben, and we'll get all that figured out. But awesome. Adam, thank you so much, dude. Thanks, my man. absolute pleasure. You guys, you guys have been absolutely extraordinary. This was so much fun. Um, I love being with all of you. Seriously, thank you all so much for being here tonight. And yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks, well, well, before thank everybody, you. Well, thank before you we all take off, me. before we all take off, uh, don't want to put them under the gun. Should we do some, something with a uh, secret Santa? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah. We'll save that closer to the holidays. Cool. We'll figure it out. All right, cool. All, all right. right. Cool. I love it. Thanks, guys. I love it, guys. Good night. Have a great night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone.